everyone, welcome back to another Counter Side episode. So in this episode, we are going to discuss or review Awakened Hilde and also discuss her build. For that, if you want an updated Counter Side videos, please hit the subscribe button down below. Okay, so for Awakened Hilde, I have been, um, I have been bringing her actually in PvP recently. I have been practicing deploying her because again. Her deployment is a bit crucial once you deploy her because she costs five and more or less if you just you know deploy her um, unwisely she is going to be costly for you but before that she is actually an SSR awakened defender she is actually type Siegfried she is a counter and she has six deployment cost which is actually very expensive but again if you know how to play her she is actually very worthwhile she is actually ground type and ground attack as well. Okay, so for her stats, at max level, she is at combat power 10,362. Her, her HP is going to be 69,844, which is actually high, or I think for me, it's going to be very high uh, for all the units that you have in counter side. Attack is at 3,805, which is actually below average for a defender. So more or less, you're gonna need to bump it up for you to more or less, uh, for her to be able to deal more damage. Defense is also high at uh, 2,982. Her crit is actually low. Her hit is actually below average with, at 597. And her evasion is at 532, is also below average. Okay, it's Hilde skill information. So basic skill her basic attack also two valid hits swings her sword along with uh, fafnir and rain actually they're called that <laughs> inflicting aoe damage i actually like her carrying two swords she's kind of badass um i just hope they they they, re they retained her as a striker but again she's a defender so level three four five is actually increase in basic attack which is five percent per level which is actually a max of 20%. Her passive skill, Fafnir's Descent, valid is two hits. Okay, I'll say this once. When deployed, instantly knocks target in an eight meter range backward in the direction she's facing. Okay, if your enemy is actually, if she's facing um, to your right, she's going to knock everybody there towards uh, the enemy's uh, ship. Okay, so charges at, at, at the target at least 3 meters away from her, which is actually good. Collision enforcing it to attack her for inflicting, sorry, inflicting AoE damage upon collision. And forcing it to ta attack her for 3 seconds decreases special skill cooldown by 3 seconds when cast. Okay, take note that she doesn't deal damage when she enters the battlefield, when she's deployed. The damage occurs when she charges at them. Okay, this is actually one of my, the misconceptions that I had. I thought she had damage when she entered the battlefield, which is none. Um, again, I hope this clears this up with you. Her levels 3, 4 is actually a HP bonus, which is plus 5, plus 5, and plus 10, which is actually a total of 20% HP bonus, which actually gives or, or adds to her H already very high HP. At level 5, a non-cancelable barrier by 8% of max HP. So more or less, you have to make sure that her HP is superb because the barrier that she's going to give is going to take up from her max HP. Around all allies for 8 seconds upon deployment. Okay, so 8% of max, max HP around all allies for 8 seconds upon deployment, special skill cooldown is minus 5 seconds instead. So again, there is no point in deploying her first. So ideally, she will be deployed second or she will be deployed third. Once you see, uh, once you have um, units already in the battlefield, because again, this shield is actually very good and this is actually 8 seconds. Okay, 8% of max HP. This is an additional barrier for you guys and for your team. So again, 
deploy one or deploy two then i i think she would be the third one ideally or the fourth one if you can manage to hold off the opponent as well okay so special skill Re regine's wrath okay this is the other sword so fafnir and regine 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 28 seconds valid hits is actually three leaps backward into the air and crashes into the onto the ground inflicting aoe damage afterwards creates a non cancelable barrier by 25 percent of max hp again the barrier is actually dependent on her max hp so it's actually worthwhile to make sure that her hp is actually good and becomes immune to hit stun for special or lower skills for this barrier's duration which is actually fantastic her levels 3 4 is actually an increase in damage which is plus 5 plus 5 and plus 15 which is a total of 25 percent increase in damage and levels level 5 is roll disadvantage uh resistance plus 100 percent for barrier duration roll disadvantage resistance so what is this role disadvantage resistance? Um, as a defender, their disadvantage is going to be uh, rangers. So again, this is actually another um, uh, resistance for rangers. So again, it's role disadvantage resistance 100% for barrier duration. This is actually very good, which increases her survivability against rangers. And her ultimate skill is Buster Overdrive, 48 seconds, valid hits is 3, charges forward and inflicts AoE damage on contact with the first enemy in her path, decreases damage taken by 20% for 12 seconds. Okay, so for this skill, levels 2, 3, and 4 is an increase in damage of 5, 5, and 15, which is a total of 25%. Special skill cooldown. 10, minus 10 seconds after skills again very crazy very good ultimate skill okay so as you can see here for my awakened hilda i've been busy building her up so more or less for her gear um let's take a look at her gear um gear options i chose actually anti-ranger to further her immunity or damage reduction for rangers and also i had to add hp of course because we want to increase her hp um to further increase her hp um you need to more or less have her gear options at hp so for this one she need i need to change the uh, evasion to hp i think and more or less if you have the option you could actually look for um for the primary one uh, uh for hp because ideally she needs that hp I just I still have to mine for other gears, but for her armor I have the primary stat at HP, which is actually good, which I or I was already able to enhance, so it's now at plus one thousand fifty five. So anti ranger damage again is is in play for her for more survivability. For this one for so ground resistance damage as well anti-ground resistance damage is actually good as well again you have to increase her hp not so much for hit i'm i'm still looking for a viable alternative for this one but for now this will this will do and also for this one actually hit yeah, um on the other hand can be useful if, if you intend to hit someone with high evasion so i might as well leave at least one there attack is going to be there and anti-ranger resistance is actually a must for her to survive because again she is weak against your rangers so more or less that's it for her gear again gearing her is going to be tricky because um ideally you need to reach at least um more or less 80 000, 000 hp so i am still at level 100 um going to level 102 so hopefully i could still when i increase her stat stat up to level 110 hopefully i could still increase her hp up to 85,000 more or less sorry for that no battery again so anyway um more or less that is um 
that is your priority in terms of PLD. Again, damage reduction for Rangers is good. And um, the other the other damage reduction. Health set is actually um, uh, very primary for her. You can actually opt for all health set. But again, um, I think damage reduction for Rangers is also needed for her to survive on the front. Because she will take the brunt of the damage for her team. Okay, so for her deployment strategy, again, I've said this earlier. Um, you need to more or less deploy her after one, two, or even three units have deployed already. Uh, sorry, yes, have deployed already. Because again, she she actually has a shield when she, she gives your team a shield once she deploys. So that's actually also very important to have. You can actually deploy her at the back of that group or preferably in the front because she has knockback. So more or less knockback happens right in this area, going this area uh, towards the enemy ship. So again, her her deployment is very crucial. I would rather, I would also suggest that you try to keep her alive on the first deployment because again, she is going to be very pricey. For another deployment of six or if she's the leader I'll probably be good at five but again um, her value actually comes up when she lasts long in the field and more or less once you deploy her she should have a backup at the back which is composed of more or less um, rangers and also at least a pair pair her with a with a striker in front because she will need this to cut the enemies down in front again um, she is actually a tank but eventually if you don't have good backup for her um, she will actually wither down eventually so more or less she has to be backed up by good offense at the back because she won't be able to hold the enemies that much even if with her shield with her hp even with her kit, I've I've uh, I've I've seen or I've seen hill days awakened hill days that have been taken taken down because again the offense at the back is not good to help her mow down the defenders in front. So more or less, she has to have a good complement of units of heroes of counters, soldiers or mechs that could burst that front line. So again, the front line is crucial in tearing it down. She is just 50% part of it. Don't rely on her so much because again, if she dies, you won't be able to recuperate most of the time because again, her deployment cost is actually very expensive. Okay, so you've seen there her ultimate. Let's have a, another. Let's let's check out with uh, her with an AI uh, summon ground unit perhaps. So let's uh, let's reset player. Let's reset. So let's put her here. So if you can see, as she lunges, she gives a shield. Then she charges to the enemy, dealing damage or dealing AOE damage. Let's take a look at her ultimate. Final look at her ultimate. Very very nice. I I so love this character design. Really worthy of being a Valkyrie. She is really a Valkyrie. Um, again, can't say no more, but she is actually very good in terms of playing her and how she is designed. Okay, so for Awakened Hilde, um, she is not really invincible, that I may say. Because I, as I was playing her, I think for a couple of, you know, since yesterday and today, I realized that she needs to be built well for her to survive. I also realized that she needs to be supported well for her to survive. She is not your ultimate tank that she can tank in just everything or everyone in front. She has to be supported well with very good offense at the back, dealing that much damage because again, she is your shield but eventually shields down. So again, deployment. Deployment cost is a bit ridiculous but if you make her your leader, she's kinda okay, I think at five. But again, you just have to be precise in playing her because when you lose her, it's usually your turn to lose as well. Okay, guys, so if you've reached this portion of the video, which is the last part, please consider subscribing because this helps my channel a lot. I'm actually 29 subscribers shy already of 1,000 and 
a big shout out to those who have supported my channel for such a long time um nearing 10 months with this channel and hope you guys will support me every step of the way as i move towards one year for this channel and years beyond that and also guys if you have comments about this video please put them down in the comments below take care stay safe this is the warden and i'm out